Trump pleads not guilty in kangaroo court, I mean totally legitimate and not politically motivated court case, and Gadsden Gaff goes gaga. Former and possible future president Donald Trump has completely stunned the world by pleading not guilty in a Georgia court. And by completely stunned, I don't mean that his plea was stunning, but that he had to do it in the first place. He also waived his right to appear in court next week at his arraignment on the indictment, because he probably has better things to do, like golfing or playing bridge. I mean, the man is 77 and is far beyond golden girl age at this point. This now represents the fourth indictment that President Trump has already endured. He actually appeared at the others in New York, Florida, and Washington, D.C., where in which security was tight and the protesters and counter-protesters showed up in droves, kind of like Woodstock, although there was no flower power and Jimi Hendrix is dead. But there were hippies, really old lame hippies, who are now in charge and have become the man they claim to hate so much. Anyway, this indictment of Trump's is having a bit of a strange effect on the American people, because now we have a string of events that Given the nature, if Donald Trump were the power-mad despot the left claims, would he have willingly turned himself in, had gotten mugshots and complied with the courts? Or would he have called upon his legions of angels, I mean MAGAites, to finally and fully uproot the Democrats in power and their sympathetic AGs? I actually think that this is having the opposite effect that most in the Biden administration had hoped. Trump had support from the people of Atlanta a predominant black neighborhood around Fulton County Jail, he now has rap songs about him. His mugshot and legal woes have actually gained him ground in the black community. And this from Candace Owens. As black people, you know, we f with Trump. Yeah, I f with Trump. I don't know where everybody got against him. Yo, he was making the breadwinners, you heard? I'm a Democrat too, but f it, we Trump. We Trump back in office right now. I'm gonna be honest with you. I f with Trump, to be honest with you. Bro, for real, Trump really did the I like him because he's about money. It wasn't about no politics. He wanted to make America great again. Through Trump. That boy Trump, we making sure to get they bread. I ain't going to lie. I'm thinking Trump for life. Trump for life. She also shows this supporter for a very specific reason. I'm here to support President Trump. You want to know why I'm here to support President Trump? Because they done did black men like this for decades. Make up charges and put them so I know Trump is innocent. I support Trump against this corrupt, two-tiered justice system. That's why I'm here to show my support as a black man for Trump. And I'm wearing my shirt for Trump 2024, and I mean that. What do you think about the indictment? Oh, it's a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> it's going around the country. You know, Fanny, Fanny Willis, she's a, uh, she went to school with my sister. She's full of shit. <laughs> full of shit. Okay. So she's a puppet for the white liberal. And that is controlling everything. She's in front, but the white liberal back there pulling those strings, telling her what to do. That's what I think about her, making a fool of herself. Do you think it's going to help his election? Oh, of course it is. It's going to elevate him all the way. I think we should make Trump king. That's how I feel. We should make him king. Wouldn't that be like kind of like communist? No, that's no way nothing near communist. Now we're just going to make him king, but we still got our freedoms and rights and everything. He for that. Yeah, Trump for king, 2024. I just like that Fanny Willis got complete shade there. Shade, as the youngins say. I'm so weird. But take a look, though, at the best thing that the Trump campaign ever got. The lung shot. I mean, have you ever seen such a thing? Do you think he practiced it in the bathroom? <laughs> Maybe. But frankly, this now gives him so much credibility, it's incredible. The Trump campaign is going to use this lung shot to its nth degree. And they should. It's iconic. Frankly, it's downright relatable. For all of those of us who have been embattled by the man, those of us who have been put down by the government machine, relate to this completely. Oh yeah, I'm not immune from the long arm of the law. Now Marge, don't you worry. We've all had our brushes with the law. Are you Ed Flanders? No, Ned Flanders. My mistake. <laughs> I'll never have that problem again. I feel you, Ned. But let's get real on this latest indictment. Because it's not just Trump that has been harangued by Fannie Willis. There are 19 defendants in this case from the likes of former New York mayor and drag performer Rudy Giuliani, 
Now look what we've uncovered. It's Giuliani showing his softer side dressed in drag in a comedy skit with Donald Trump. You know, you're really beautiful. The spoof was filmed 16 years ago when Giuliani was mayor of New York for a charity dinner. Yeah, that happened. Comedy, am I right? And also Mark Meadows, former White House chief of staff, Jenna Ellis, Trump campaign lawyer, even Harrison Floyd, the leader of Black Voices for Trump, and others. These 19 defendants are being charged with violating Georgia's Racketeer-Influenced and Corrupt Organization Act, commonly referred to as the RICO Act. Well, that's right. A law that was written to help lawyers indict organized crime bosses with their underlings is being used against the Republican frontrunner and crew because they didn't like and question the outcome of the 2020 election. Now, to be fair, the claim is that the Trump crew organized faked electors in swing states to sign certificates claiming that Trump won the election. I mean, they're talking about stolen data, intimidating election officials, and all kinds of election shenanigans. Which, by the way, was a great but now terribly diminished Irish pub chain. Was that? Oh, Bennigan's? Ah. Ah, Bennigan's. What couldn't you do with light American fare? Hm. So really, something smells fishy here. I mean, doesn't it seem very strange for such a highly prominent figure in Trump, in the most sacred of American event, the election, to wait around from 2020 until the next election cycle for these indictments to start rolling in? I mean, Fox News even gave a more than interesting and aligned timeline of events that brought all these charges into question. So let's start in New York City this March. Look at this, Biden family and the laptop revelations versus Trump's indictments. So this is the first indictment. March 16th, the House Oversight Committee reveals that Biden family payments from this Chinese energy company. Well, look at this. Two days later, Trump says he's going to be indicted in New York. He wrote that on social media. Then April 4th, the Manhattan DA, Alvin Bragg, indicts Trump in that hush money case. This is right after we find out about all this money from the energy company. Okay, so that is New York City. Let's go to Florida. This is in June. The bribery allegations and the plea deals versus Trump's second indictment. So these are the classified documents, Mar-a-Lago stuff. So on June 7th, the FBI releases the documents alleging that the Bidens took the $10 million bribe from Burisma. Remember? The uh, owner of Burisma caught in the coffee shop saying five million for one Biden, five million for another. Then the very next day, look at this, Jack Smith indicts Trump in the Mar-a-Lago document case. Then on July 26, that's the Hunter Biden sweetheart deal that's rejected. The very next day, July 27th, Jack Smith adds more charges in the Mar-a-Lago case. Let's slap some more charges to that. All right, so then in July, let's go to DC. Devin Archer interview versus Trump's third indictment. So this was the J January 6th stuff. July 31st, Devin Archer testifies that Joe Biden was on 20 plus phone calls with his son's business partners. The very next day, Jack Smith indicts Trump for the January 6th case. Coincidence? We don't know. You decide. All right, now let's go to Georgia. This happened uh, recently, the last few days, FBI agent transcript versus Trump's fourth indictment. So in the morning on August 14th, GOP releases the transcripts from this FBI agent involved in the Hunter Biden investigation. And it has it happens to uh, coincide with what the whistleblower was saying, that they someone tipped off, the Secret Service tipped off Hunter Biden. He was never interviewed. So their stories are very similar. So then on August 14th, that same day, later in the afternoon or that night and that evening, Fulton County DA Fonnie Willis charges Trump and 18 others in the Georgia 2020 election probe. So could all of these things lining up be a complete coincidence? Yeah. And so could my bloated tummy ache and love of fast casual dining. You look back on this and have to just say, come on, man. Are we really supposed to believe that through all the slings and arrows that Trump got through his presidency, through the, and I lost count of how many, impeachment hearings, to the constant blatant lies of the media and opponents of things Trump didn't say, that to believe that the political elite have such a duty to justice that they wait around until the most opportune times to smear their political opponent in an open show of political power during a highly contentious presidential election year, while ultimately the clear and present issues of the Biden family corruption goes completely undiminished, and that all of this is done in the name of American justice? Now, what was the word of the year in 2022? Gaslighting? Yeah. It may be this year's word, too. 
And in other liberty-loving news, a young man by the name of Jaden Rodriguez was harassed by school officials for patches on his backpack that displayed such pearl-clutching images such as the Gadsden flag in this viral clip. We want the flag, the reason we do not want the flag to mm -hmm. is due to its origins with the the slavery and slave trade. That is what was, um, that is the reason behind them not want to slave. The boy and his mom were told by officials at the Vanguard School in Colorado that he was in violation of the school's dress code policy because he displayed such hateful messages as don't tread on me and support for gun rights. Now, what is so hateful about these messages? Well, the school stated that it was primarily the Gadsden flag's origins with slavery that caused such a response. However, the Gadsden flag has nothing to do with slavery and everything to do with telling the British armed forces during the American Revolution to not tread on the rights of their, at that time, fellow countrymen. It was used by such prominent figures of the American Revolution, such as Commodore Essex Hopkins, the U.S.'s first naval commander-in-chief, and is joined by such other revolutionary war snake imagery, such as the famous Join or Die political cartoon published by Benjamin Franklin. The Gadsden flag was used predominantly by its namesake, Christopher Gadsden, for use by the provincial forces in South Carolina during the war. These days, the Gadsden flag is a regular at freedom rallies held by those despicable people who want to leave you alone. In any event, Jaden and his mother, of course, called out the school for their selective outrage due to the fact that the school has no standing rule about patches. And if you watch the video, the young man, and yes, he is a total man for enduring this nonsense, is a very well-dressed and presents very clearly. So it seems, as the evidence shows, that this is a clear case of some school official just not liking the message of the Gadsden flag and trying to fabricate a connection that isn't there in order to shame and rid themselves of such ideas as personal liberty and freedom. The Rodriguez family also suggests that this was a targeted issue, primarily because many students had other badges, patches, and pins, some with the pride flag, and none of them had to deal with the same retribution as he had. Now, the school, however poorly run, has the right to issue any policy it deems necessary for the continued goal of educating students without distraction. However, they must apply these policies evenly. And yes, the school and the school board have to listen to parents on their approval and reaction of these policies, even if it gets caustic and vehement. So says the Supreme Court of 1964 case, New York Times v. Sullivan. The students do have a right to freedom of speech and expression, and these things do not stop at the schoolhouse door, because the Vanguard School is a public school. Now, isn't this the issue? Really, truly. The fact that we try to stuff students into a one-size-fits-all thought factory that humans were never really truly designed for is the real issue. If you don't like the Gadsden flag imagery and wish all the little children to dance on pride flags, then start a school that does so. You want to send your kids to a First Amendment respecting Gadsden waving where teachers can open carry school? That actually sounds pretty awesome. Then start it. When we try to run something public, for the public's sake, that's truly best for everyone, you get things that are the best for no one. Public schools have grown into ideology factories, not institutions of learning, or, for that fact, critical thinking. So, what's the solution? School choice. Freedom of association. The right to teach your child how you wish. When we all start to realize that none of us think the same way, will start respecting the way other people think. Until then, please, don't tread on anyone. Thanks for watching Good News, Bad News. I identify as Matthew Bellis. Please like and subscribe and share this video around. We really appreciate that. And remember, Jesus is Lord, Caesar is not. That's the good, that's the bad, and that's the news.